This episode is scripted by John Ruths and Newell Fisher and is narrated, recorded and edited by Newell Fisher. John's notes for this episode were dedicated to Samantha the Wonder Dog, who he lost just before writing them. I dedicated episode 45 to her memory. Rest in peace, Samantha. Hello. And welcome to the Watership Down podcast, episode 48, in which we will be looking at chapter 46, Bigwig Stands His Ground. This being just about the climax of the entire novel, let's get straight down to it. Chapter 46, Bigwig Stands His Ground. The pre-chapter quote is one of Richard Adams' finest selections. It was spoken by the Duke of Wellington at the Battle of Waterloo and is a brutal summary of the bottom line of war, and of boxing come to that, that the winner is the one who can keep landing blows for the longest. This sums up the content of this chapter very well. Having just left Hazel in distress at Nuthanger Farm, we're now back at the siege on Watership Down. The following events build upon the readers having no idea of the fate of Hazel having been pinned down by the farm cat. It's a real cliffhanger. The chapter opens with a conversation between General Woundwart, the Napoleon here, and Groundsel, who we might think of as, as his number three in this particular military operation. Woundwart is asking very logical questions of Groundsel. However, his own judgment seems a bit off when he makes a comment about our heroes, quote, skulking underground. We're all victims of our own experiences, and we can see that in, that in Woundwart as well. The hole straight down into the honeycomb is already dug and is ready to collapse at its base. Woundwalk plans to drop straight into this large and impressive burrow, then to have as many rabbits as possible follow him in. The Afrafids on site are impressed with Woundwalk's calmness. As readers, we surely cannot help being impressed with the practicality and precision of his orders. He will drop into the honeycomb with three other rabbits. Another will stay at the newly dug entrance and send more in once the first wave are clear. Then they will reopen a run, and the rest will pile in that way with Campion. Without stopping to listen, Woundwalk goes in. Not listening first and just going in without hesitation is a deliberate gamble on his part. Woundwalk is a tyrant, but he's also intelligent, calculating and brave. All of these will be tested soon. Very soon, Woundwalk is followed by Vervain and the seemingly dim Thunder, an odd name for a rabbit. Thunder discovers a rabbit that he believes is dead. It's clear that this is Fiverr. Five more rabbits, led by Groundsel, join, so there are now eight Afrafans inside the warren. The second rabbit joining Vervain after Woundwort doesn't seem to be referred to again. Immediately, they suss out the layout. The tree roots at the eastern end, and the field in bays at the western end. Two pairs are put to work opening up runs at both ends, especially as they have detected movement behind one of the field in bays. The point of view switches to Bigwig, who is expecting company at any time. We've also gone back in time a few moments. Bigwig and Holly discuss that this warren, unlike Sandalford, was not dug to be defended. This gives Bigwig an idea, to essentially get dug in so that he can use himself as a single blocking force, much like the Spartans at Thermopylae. He'll take advantage of the narrowness underground. The Spartans used a phalanx formation. Many centuries later, the British used the infantry square. Both formations were good at blocking an advancing enemy, including mounted cavalry. Essentially, Bigwig is doing much the same thing, at least from a rabbit's point of view. It is precisely what is needed in this situation. He also knows that his only chance against Woundwort is to hurt him straight away. Bigwig gets dug into the floor of the run, and, there being nothing for it, they leave Fiverr in place. Pigpin offers to stay with Fiverr, and so surely sacrifices his life. Holly does not allow this in a very respectful way. And so Bigwig is lying and buried in wait for the arrival of the Afrafans, and more particularly, Woundwort. He has told his companions to make some noise behind their blocked run to make sure the Afrafans attack that one, and it has worked. Back to the Afrafans now. Thunder learns that what looks like a field in area is just a loose pile. The scent of many rabbits is now leaking out. All for the good, because it pretty much guarantees that this will be the way the Afrafans will go. What Woundwort should have done was to have brought in as many Afrafans as this small area could hold. However, you could say his judgment again seems to be impaired. He's used to going in hard once the fighting starts without worrying about numbers, but on this occasion his lower numbers are trapped underground. The sun is coming up soon, and they've only now got to this point. He is anxious to get this war and invasion concluded. 
As Woundwort makes his way through the loose soil, a rabbit, who we now must we know must be Bigwig, emerges from the floor of the run and bites Woundwort hard in the pit of one of his forelegs. Woundwort reacts very quickly and strikes himself, raking the rabbit across the back and haunch. However, Woundwort's wound goes to a muscle group and proves to be a critical one. Bigwig's sudden rearing up, his attack, and the loose soil behind him, Woundwort, all combine. Woundwort is unable to use his weight and is thrown backward. He, reactiv he reactively attacks, but this misses. Most likely this has never happened to him before. Woundwort stands up and realises it is the extent of his wound. He'll not be able to put his full weight on his front paws, and using his weight against his past opponents was a key advantage. Having taken advantage of surprise, Bigwick has taken away what may be Woundwort's biggest advantage in a fight. Vervain asks if Woundwort is okay and receives a highly irritated answer. Bigwig now announces his presence with his famous line about impressing Woundwort. Woundwort now knows who bit him. He threatens death to Bigwig and announces that he knows that the white bird is not here. Bigwig then tries to goad Woundwort in, but he is too smart for this. As Woundwort moves, Bigwig notes that on the side where he bit the paw is, dra is dragging. His observations are intelligent, and those are a rabbit who is comfortable fighting. You'd have to guess that most other rabbits would not be able to make an observation like this. Bigwig strikes at Woundwort's side. However, no attack on the general can happen without a counterattack. This happens, and Bigwig's right ear is bitten and torn. Letting loose of the ear, Woundwort's wounded leg gives way as he tries to rear up, and Bigwig gets in a couple more blows across his face. So far, it seems like Bigwig has forgotten the best of things. Bigwig is bleeding from two places, but Woundwort also has wounds, and one of these won't let him stand up straight. And then Bigwig realises that he can see Woundwort's outline. The fight has taken place in complete darkness up to now. But the sun is now rising. Next time, we journey rapidly from Nuthanger Farm back to Watership Down with a special weapon, as the death match between Woundwort and Slaley continues. Mm -hmm.